Hey Todd, Dougworth here. Let's talk a little bit about my uh, rabbit distress call here, my stack em rabbit distress call. Now, you, you know, if you're just starting out coyote hunting and you had to pick one call, I would say to get the stack em close read distress. Close read means that the read is inside the call, and this is by far the, the easiest call to make a good sound on. Uh, it's a rabbit distress or a prey distress. And I'll tell you this, this is my go-to call. The good old rabbit in distress has called in more coyotes than probably all the other calls combined. So this is easy, you can't screw it up. What you wanna do is you're just gonna blow some air through it from your diaphragm. And like I said, the reed is inside the call. So I'm gonna blow air from my diaphragm. And what you wanna do is just, you know, make it, give it some emotion, make it sound like something's getting killed. You don't have to be the, the perfect, you know, dying rabbit. Uh, so it sounds like this. So that's the that's the stackum rabbit praying distress call. It's my go-to call. You can't mess it up. Put some emotion into it. Blow some air through it. It's a loud volume call, and I promise you, it'll help you shoot some coyotes. Hey Todd, Dougworth here. Today I want to take a few minutes and give you a little demonstration on the my coyote howler, my Wacom howler. Now this is a, all your howlers are, are open read calls and I've said this many times before, if you're not howling for coyotes you're missing out on a lot of fun. There's nothing more exciting to see a, a coyote come in all, you know, yipping and yapping and growling and all bristled up. So if you're not howling, I strongly suggest it. Now I've tried every howler on the market, and I'll tell you what, I'm not afraid to say that my howler is by far the easiest howler there is. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate how you howl on this Wacom Howler. This is an open reed call, so you can see the reed up here, the, the reed. Now when I use this, the reed, I know it sounds silly, but some people ask me this question, the reed goes up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, with my teeth, about halfway down on this reed, and if I bite further down, I get more of a, a, a harsher howl, a little more aggressive howl, maybe an older coyote or a male coyote. So I usually stay in the center because I'm gonna do what's called a, some people call it a friendly howl, some people call it interrogation howl, some people call it uh, an invitational howl. So I'm gonna say about midway down this reed. Now my teeth are gonna touch the top and the bottom of the tone board here. I'm not gonna bite into it, I'm not leaving a mark or anything like that. I'm gonna start out, most people do better if you start your howls out with a couple barks. Now all a bark is is a quick blast of air and as I blast that air through the call, my tongue follows it and touches the end of the reed. That stops the, the sound. So I'm gonna do a bark bark, and then I'm gonna go into my invitational howl, which is a, it kind of draws out, you know, it peaks and then it goes down uh, and tapers off at the end. So it sounds like this. Two barks, and then I'm gonna do the howl. Very simple, there's nothing to it. It's all coming from my diaphragm. Teeth on top, teeth on bottom, not biting down hard. Two barks, you know, blast of air. As you blast that air out, your tongue follows along and just touches the end of the reed, puts a stop on the sound, that's where your bark comes from. So that's the, the dog breath stack em howler. If you're not howling, you're missing out on a heck of a lot of fun. Not only is it a, a good, uh, you get good responses, uh, you know, coyotes coming in, but there's a lot of fun when you actually get one that's that's talking back to you. So that's it, the stack em holler. Have some fun, go shoot yourself some coyotes. Let's talk about the little ripping rabbit. Now this is a open read distress call. What's interesting about this little call, not only is it a great call for coyotes, I've called a lot of fox in 
with it also. So if you're a fox hunter, the Rip and Rabbit will be a great call for you to have. Now this call, you can make uh, both distress sounds on it, you can make some crazy bird sounds on it, and you can make some great key eyes on it. Same thing here, what I'm going to do, just like on the howler, I'm going to put my teeth about halfway down the reed here, touching the top and the bottom of the tone board. Not biting down, but just touching. Wind comes from your, the breath comes from your diaphragm. Sounds like this. Now to do your key eyes on here, same kind of thing. But what I'm going to do is I blow this. Listen, I got the crows all fired up. What I'm going to do as I blow this is I'm going to rake my teeth back toward the tip of the, the reed here. Here they come. It is crow season. But here's the key eyes. So that's a ripping rabbit. Add it to your bag of tricks. Not only is it a good fox call and a good coyote call, apparently it calls in crows too. So that's it. Go shoot some coyotes. Hey, Dog Breath here. Today I want to go into a little bit more detail on the Dog Breath Hot Mama Esther's Chirp. Now, if you remember from the introductory video, this is a, a sound that a female coyote makes when she's ready to mate. And the reason for this sound is to uh, attract a, a male who's also ready to mate. Not only to attract a male, but maybe to get a male charged up so he is ready and willing to mate. Now, of all the coyote sounds, that you're going to make the, the howls and the yips and the key eyes and things like that. The Esther's chirp on the hot mama call here, this will probably be the by far the easiest call sound you'll ever do for a coyote vocalization. Uh, it's the simplest thing in the world. I made this call so anybody can pick it up, take it out of the package, and you can make an excellent Esther's chirp immediately. And it's very simple. and it's so simple it's hard to even make a video about it because there's really not much that you have to do all I'm gonna do is place my mouth over the reed and I'm not really biting down or anything like that I just have my lips on the reed and the idea is to put some force behind your ear it's gonna come from your diaphragm and just some quick blasts of air now another thing that I'm doing as I blast out that air my tongue is just touching the end of the reed here and that puts a stop on it. So it's a, it's a sharp um, chirp or a sharp bark sound. Not really, you don't really want to sound like a, like a dog bark. It's more of a, a, a big bird chirp. So it sounds like this and it's, it's so simple guys. So all, all I'm doing, quick blast of air. My tongue kind of follows there as it, as it blasts out through the call and just touches the end of the reed that stops the reed. That makes that an abrupt chirp sound. So it's the hot mama. You know, everybody and their brother's been out there blowing rapid distress calls, uh, you know, on their hand calls, on their electronic calls. And this is something that will separate the, your sound from things coyotes have heard forever. And also don't, you know, you can do the Esther's Chirp through the whole set. And like I had said earlier, I watched two coyotes on two different occasions, two female coyotes do this sound. One lasted about an hour and the other one is about 45 minutes. And that's the only sound they made. You know, the, the you know, seven, eight of those in a row, they would stop for not very long at all and then start back up again. So you can, you can do the chirp sound in your complete set. But I wouldn't be afraid to uh, to throw in some other coyote vocals. Now this is the uh, howler from the Barkin Bang set that I have.
So don't be afraid to do some chirps, mix it in with some, some howls. You know, don't be afraid to mix it up a little bit, but the, the Esther's chirp is something that can be your complete call sequence through your whole set. And like I always preach, you know, if you're an Eastern Coyote hunter and you're not setting at least 45 minutes, you're leaving, you got, you, doc, you got dogs coming, you're leaving just too early. So that's it. It's, it's so simple. Like I said, it's hard to make a, a long, detailed out video about it. It's just some, from your diaphragm, some quick blasts of air. And as I blast the air out from my diaphragm, my tongue just touches the end of the reed. That puts a stop to the chirp sound. So that's it. If you have any questions, you can always shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to try to answer them. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Get yourself the Dog Breath Hot Mama and go out there and shoot yourself some coyotes. Todd here, Dog Breath Coyote Call. Today I want to talk about my two call set here. My Bark and Bang call set, which is named after the shooting technique that I teach in my seminars, Bark and Bang. Now this set is really all a coyote hunter needs. You have both your, your distress call, your rabbit, your prey distress, and your coyote howler. So let's talk about the, the distress call here. Now, if you're just starting out as a coyote hunter, I'll tell you the good old rabbit and distress call is probably called in more coyotes than all the other calls combined. You know, you have some electronic calls out there will do you know, hundreds of sounds but it's, it's going to be tough for you to outdo the, just the plain old rabbit distress. Now this is a closed reed call, and what that means is the reed is inside the call. So this is by far the easiest coyote call sound there is. You really can't screw it up. You just have to blow some air through it. Now you don't have to make the perfect sounding dying rabbit. You just have to sound like something's getting killed. So you want to put some some volume and some emotion into it. So it's it's very simple. It sounds like this. So that's the the bang, that's the close read distress of the bark and bang call set. Now let's talk about the uh, the howler here a little bit. I'll say this uh, again, if you're not Halloween, if Halloween isn't part of the bag, your bag of tricks, you're missing out on a lot of fun because there's nothing more exciting than having a big alpha male coyote come in all yipping, yapping, and growling and all bristled up looking for a fight. So I've been Halloween for several years and I really have bought probably every howler that's ever come out on the market. And uh, I'll be honest with you, some of them, you know, they look good in the video, they they look great in the package, but you get that darn thing home and either it uh, takes a heck of a lot of practice or it's almost impossible to get a good howl out of it. So I really spent a lot of time on my howler, almost a year to get it just so it would be easy, it would sound good, it would be a consistent sound. Some of the howlers on the market, uh, you know, if you don't, if you get a little change in your airflow, you can go from a nice coyote howl to a, to a duck, just like that. So. Everything makes a difference, you know, the, the length of the barrel, the tone board, the reed length, the reed thickness, the reed width, the air channel, all comes into play to make a good, easy coyote howler. So this is the, the bark howler. Now, the way that I usually start out all my stands is with what you might call a friendly howl or an invitational howl. It's more of a female howl, a higher pitch sound, uh, maybe a young coyote. And I usually start out with a with two or three barks and then I go into my howl. Now you want to bring your howl up and just kind of let it taper off. So a couple more things here. I know this sounds silly, but I get asked this question. The reed, the, the white part here, the reed goes up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna about halfway down on this reed, I'm gonna touch the reed and the bottom of the tone board here with my teeth. I'm not biting down, I'm not leaving a mark or anything, but I'm placing my teeth about halfway down on here. I'm going to start out with a couple barks. Now to do a bark, it's really kind of a hut-hut sound. So I'm going to give a couple quick two, three blasts of air, then I'm going to go into my howl, bring it up and let it taper off. So this is it, the, the bark howler.
Now, you can also do, you know, some other coyote vocals on here. You can do a, a challenge bark howl or a challenge howl. And the only difference there, I'm going to, you know, do my barks, my couple barks. And then instead of letting that howl come up and taper off, I'm going to abruptly stop it. And the way I do that is I just take my tongue and I tap the end of the reed here. So it's a hut hut, a bark bark, start your howl, and then hit the end of the reed with your tongue. That'll cut it off. A, a bark challenge is, is more of an aggressive sound. It sounds like this. So that's your bark challenge. Another sound that you can make on the uh, bark holler here is your, your key eyes. And all a key eye is, it's like your dog's foot got stepped on. Now, most coyote hunters will tell you the key eye sound is a good sound to get on right after you've made a shot, whether you've hit or missed a coyote, get on those key eyes right away. Now, what I'm going to do with my key eyes, I'm going to start out the same way, about halfway down on that reed. But as I put air through the call, I'm going to pull my teeth back towards, in my mouth, my lips back towards the, the tip of the reed here. Sounds like this. This is your key eyes. So that's it. That's the, the bark and bang call set. And just like all my calls, dog breath calls, they have a reputation for high quality, ease of use, and effectiveness. These are all handmade one at a time on a CNC machine. You know, a lot of the calls that are on the market, the mass produced calls, they're just a cheap piece of molded plastic like a kid's toy that somebody threw a reed on. So bark and bang, add it to your call bag, and go shoot yourself some coyotes.